As people from all over the world started to move into New Amsterdam, this anonymous trade post slowly became more like an actual town. The traders became colonists and realized they would probably never leave. And then one guy stands up, someone who sees Manhattan's potential because it lies on the edge of a huge, unexplored continent. And this man was Adrian van der Donk. In a time when the name America itself wasn't even fully settled, Van der Donk knew exactly what it could one day become. In his book, Russell Shorto calls Adrian Van der Donk an early American prophet, a forerunner of the revolutionary generation. He was the only lawyer in the colony. He was trained at Leiden. He, um, and he, he was a very different type. He was um, humanistic. He was, uh, he was kind of on the cutting edge of things. And he then started writing this series of letter, legal petitions explaining the situation because you know, they were busy with other things. This was nowhere. So he was explaining this island, Manhattan, this place that we've got. And he was saying, you, you need to help us. You need to support us. We need soldiers. We need laws. We need things to be done uh, properly. The home country, the Dutch Republic, was then a revolutionary society. It had just declared its independence from the powerful but stagnant Spanish Empire and with a newfound self-confidence Holland embraced, more fully than any other nation of its time, the spirit of the European Enlightenment. And Adrian van der Donk was a product of this new era. What he said in his petition to them is, we have this colony that sits beside this continent that is so vast we don't even know how big it is. And we have, he, he brought in the, the notion of uh, the mixed population that already existed in the Netherlands and, the, and Dutch tolerance. And he said, those things, this society on, this, on the edge of this continent mean that ultimately this is going to grow to outstrip the home country in power. And you have to support us. And if you don't, it will still happen, but it will happen under the English. So he foresaw what was going to happen. When he was back in Holland, he wrote a pamphlet explaining how great this new continent was. When these pages were released, hundreds of people tried to get on ships that set sail for New Amsterdam. Setting out to explore a new world they only knew about because of Van der Donk, who was fighting for official recognition of the colony. He didn't get all he wanted. The one thing that he did get was uh, they gave a municipal charter to the city of New Amsterdam in 1653. And what that did is it gave them a city council, it made them a, a properly a Dutch city. It gave them rights, gave them a city council, laws. Uh, the city council then did things like it uh, built the wall. They, they carried out a census and there's a map that uh, exists based on the census which shows 252 houses in the town. So we know all the houses at that year. We know who lived in them or who owned them. Um, so and it was becoming more and more orderly. Van der Donk wrote about how New Netherland could become a refuge for the needy. No matter if you were high or low born, in New Amsterdam you could make it if you tried. But the English saw this too. And of all the parties that understood what New Amsterdam could become, there was only one painfully ignorant. The conservative corporation called the West India Company, which was actually running the town. What I think it's worth trying to imagine is is this very tiny place of a few streets and a couple hundred houses and it's in the middle of nowhere. You know, they are so far from anything that's uh, civilization and they are locked in this struggle over their fate. Um, and on the one side you have the West India Company represented by Peter Stuyvesant, the soldiers and his officials. And the other side you have Adrian van der Donk and these others who were with him in this uh, party. And you know, what they were fighting over was the future. They knew this is the beginning of something. Maybe it is fitting that van der Donk found his end in as much of a tragedy as the state the colony was in around the time of his death. In the so-called Peach War, his house got raided by Native Americans. Van der Donk was survived by his wife and his parents, whom he had convinced to move to the new world. 
And you know what will become of New Amsterdam and what language it ended up speaking. And how that happened, how New Amsterdam eventually became New York, will be in the last episode of Russell's tour. <laughs>